Lip anatomy lesson for injectors. In this video, I'm gonna cover some of the detailed anatomy that will give you more confidence when you're injecting. It really does matter how far away those arteries tend to be from the surface of the lip. It completely changes how you will approach the lip and how you feel when you're injecting at different depths. It really does matter what your resolution for depth and precision is. And this does take careful thought and time to develop. When you understand where the superior and inferior labial arteries are in a three-dimensional space, you will suddenly realize how many of the debates that we have in medical aesthetics about how to inject more safely are actually built on 2D models. I'll give you a really important example of this. If you have a look at some of the more recent papers on ultrasound, they will often describe the position of the labial artery as being in the vermilion border. Whereas many other papers, particularly from Godava studies, will often describe the superior labial artery being in the wet dry border. And so which is it? So there are two important aspects to think about in your learning. What is the resolution of your understanding and what is the 3D anatomy, not just the 2D? So let's make this real by thinking about horizontal versus vertical injections. So the debate between horizontal and vertical injections will probably rage on no matter what we say in this video, but it does help to understand why the position of the needle and many of the arguments that people put for or against each one of these techniques are usually based on a flawed resolution of the anatomy. For example, if you think that a horizontal injection is safer because you tend to be pointing away from the labial artery which is in the wet dry border, as I've seen many injectors say, you're actually not basing that on 3D anatomy because the artery is not in the wet dry border and it's not in the vermilion border. It's actually two to three millimeters above or two to three millimeters behind both of those structures. And that resolution makes a very big difference to how you might be consider injecting. Remember a needle's width is about 0.1 of a millimeter. So there's actually plenty of space if you have a three millimeter space for a good injector to slip between the artery and the, and the lip wall. But this isn't something that most injectors think about when they are in the debate between vertical versus horizontal, which is the depth. And that's a three dimensional understanding. And that's where a lot of these of the confusion actually comes from. So let's have a look at the basic anatomy of the lip. I really like to look at it in cross section. I think this is a vital way to understand the lip because it gives you the idea of depth. But then we also need to understand how those structures intertwine with each other. And this is where the 3D really makes things so much easier. If you have a look at this model here that I'm showing you, you can see the different layers. We have the, the dermis, then this very thin layer of hypodermis in the top lip, which is often where we're trying to treat fine line wrinkles. Then you have the most important structure probably of the lip, which is the orbicularis oris muscle. This muscle has its origin actually on the maxilla or the mandible, and then it branches out from that, reaching in, in four different sections across to the modiolus where it, the two sides meet. And that forms the biggest and the strongest part of the structure of the mouth. Underneath the orbicularis oris, you have the mucosa, and it's in this space that we tend to find the superior labial artery. So this is probably the bit that most injectors are most worried about affecting when you first start. Obviously we want to get beautiful results, but you also want to avoid the artery. So when you look at the data on where that artery tends to lie, it's actually been quite well described as nearly always being underneath the superior labial artery at a depth of about four to five millimeters typically. Now you must be careful when reading this data because often certain studies come, for example, from cadaver studies. And a cadaver, an 80 year old lip is a very different lip to a 22 year old lip, which is what we're injecting. So never take that data as completely fixed and inject as if the arteries are in the same place. Probably in younger lips, you may have a bit more room because there's a bit more tissue other than blood vessels, but the blood vessels also tend to be a little bit bigger in theory because there's more tissue to supply. But it does help to know that, they, that it is behind the muscle because you can see where the muscle is relatively easily. Because have a look at, once again at this diagram and you can see how the orbicularis curves around and inserts, has an, an insertion point into the skin right where your vermilion border is. That's essentially what your vermilion border is, is the junction between the muscle and the two types of tissue the white lip or the skin, the dermis, and your mucosa. That meeting point is a very important reference point when we start to inject because everything is relative to that meeting point and the artery that lies underneath the muscle. We can use that in many different ways to inject more accurately. So in this diagram, you can see I'm, I'm showing how that position of the needle is relative to the insertion point. In fact, if I zoom right in, you can see how it has been slid purposefully 
underneath where the muscle is, which is above, and then into the volume metric part of the lip. So this insertion point is very, very important for accuracy. If you're inserting a needle directly into the, into the vermilion border, you tend to be going through an area where there is a greater sensitivity. There are more nerves there, so it's more painful. And you're also sliding into the muscle itself, so there will be more bruising and potentially more complications and inflammatory reactions, some people think, if filler is embedded in the muscle as opposed to in other types of tissue. So this is why accuracy here makes a huge difference and your understanding of the 3D. You can see in this image that I'm recording how much space there would be and we did create these images to be to scale. So there's a relatively large amount of space on the average patient between where your entry point is and the depth of your needle so long as you're controlled and where the vessels tend to be. And you can see why it wouldn't really matter so much which angle you're entering in because your depth is the defining feature that makes you safer. And I'll throw this in now as a case, as an interesting point, which is should you aspirate when doing lips? Now, my position is that I tend to aspirate nearly all the time. I do it mainly out of muscle memory, but it is absolutely possible to do really safe procedures without aspirating so long as you're doing other things instead. So I'm a big proponent of aspirating and I recommend that you generally aspirate, but really what I'm after is becoming a safer injector. And sometimes aspirating decreases your control because you are, you're moving the needle around too much in certain circumstances or you lose your position. So there are certain injections where I don't aspirate, whereas most I do. And it's really important to understand that it's not really about whether you aspirate or not, it's about the totality of all the different safety measures that you take. So something that happened last year which I found really helpful is to allow myself to be directed during a procedure by a very experienced injector. Many of you would have seen it. This is the live I did with Julie Horn where she directed as she would do a pair of lips um, according to the 8D framework which I teach. So she designed the solution and I executed it and then I unpicked what she was thinking all the way through the journey. And what was really interesting is some very tiny differences in how she understands the lip actually changed the result quite significantly. And I got this amazing upgrade by just thinking through every tiny step that she did. So the example I'll share with you is when doing a vertical injection, I would stop injecting about a millimeter from the exit point of the needle. And she essentially keeps going a bit longer. Now I was attempting just to keep the bulk of the, of the filler in the anterior compartment of the lip and I wasn't really focused so much on the defining part of the lip because I thought that would be done with maybe a horizontal injection. But I learned that if you keep injecting along that path, essentially you get a much crisper border at that point than I thought was likely to be possible with the injection technique I'd been using previously. So that's a, an example of a small shift that comes through high resolution thinking, which is actually where a lot of the gains are. So really, really useful to really unpick how injectors are doing things if you think they're great injectors and then see if you can replicate that and improve your understanding. It's a never ending process, we're never finished, but it's super useful. If you're interested in learning more about lip techniques, then there's a free download you can have from the experience I did with Julie Horn in the description of this video. And we also have an opportunity to learn a lot more 3D anatomy coming up soon. So click the link in the description for that too.